In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint blue white, bone white, and grey white all in five minutes just with the dry brush. Welcome to another Artist Opus video. We are covering, if it will focus, there we go, how to paint blue white, grey white, and bone white. Uh, all super useful, all slightly different methods, all finishing in white scar. Um, one thing we cover in the video, but I want to cover now, just in case you're looking at it and thinking it's not very white, is number one, white looks, the whites we've got at least, will look way whiter next to other things that aren't super bright like they are. So then when you put that next to like a deep blue or some leather or some chainmail or whatever it is, it will look brighter. If you want to make them look brighter and use a halaya, like a, a larger percentage of white, if we take the uh, blue version, for example, this is the first stage, finish in gray. This is the second stage, pink horror. Just use like four fifths of this and one fifth of this and take that approach for your colors throughout the, uh, throughout the steps through to white scar and you'll end up with something brighter. Finally, um, you may have noticed this gorgeous texture palette in the video. It is amazing. It is available on our website now. We've done that in cooperation with Nailer Games for Magnate the Board Game. It's gorgeous. It's a work of art. I felt like I was messing it up, putting paint on it for the first time. But uh, please grab one, help support the channel. And if you like the video, leave a comment below. If you don't like it, leave a comment below. Any subscriber who leaves a comment, once a month we will draw a prize out of a hat and take the best comment or the funniest comment or whatever, or just someone who we know that is commenting on every single video. And we will send you a message and you can pick series D, S or M, a texture palette of your choice, which of course could be the beautiful one that I've just shown you. So thank you very much for watching and enjoy the video. Okay, so white number one. Uh, we're going to be starting with our kind of neutral grey white, so there's not anything going on particularly extra in these, just uh, Dawnstone, Grey Seer, Corax White, and then we'll finish with White Scar, as we will with all of our whites, that's kind of the, the common colour there. Uh, they're quite, you could say this is quite a soft one, maybe it leans more towards warm than cold, but it is fairly neutral on the whole, so first steps first, I'm going to waken up my dampening pad, dampening, dampening sounds a bit serious, doesn't it? Just using a large here, just for the base coating stage. And if you're wondering, this texture palette is soon going to be on our web store. It is a rather gorgeous uh, Magnate the First City board game collaboration with Nailer Games. Really, really nice piece of kit. And I feel awful putting paint on it, <laughs> but there we go. We've begun now. So um, I've gone from a grey primed base coat, but the first stage is just to give it a flat, nice, solid base coat. This can be a combination of stippling and normal brushing. Shouldn't take too long. There you go, so that's the grace here. And then we can move on to our next step. So now we're onto the grace here. Take a small amount of it. Obviously we've still got some of our grace here left in the brush. We've kind of worked it out in the palette, but we haven't, haven't really like gone to town cleaning it between stages. So this I'm gonna be concentrating on the, kind of the bits that would be catching the light in terms of the midsection. And then according to basically what I've decided, which I can dictate quite easily because I'm using a reflection of the light here, I'm gonna hit other areas a little bit too. So I'm keeping it towards the middle of it for the heavy stuff. And then once I've removed the load from the brush, I'm quite happy with going to the sides. I really want to remove quite a lot before I go to the Corax White stage. Now the reason why we're using Corax White and then another white is because Corax White isn't white, it's in fact light grey. So that's really going to help us out in terms of um, just having one more step to go to with our upcoming White Scar stage. Um, it means that you can do what looks like a final highlight but it isn't really. Again we've got the previous stages that have been done on this brush there, they kind of they're going to be punching through a little bit, but this is a significantly brighter step. So keeping it to the middle, catching the scales just, and then the rest of it is going to be caught with fairly careful dry brushing. Looking to catch edges. And then any sections like this one here, where we've got uh, quite a lot of detail going on, just pay attention to the, which, the direction in which you're dry brushing it. 
And if you want to hit an area a little bit more, you can give it a specific stipple like that. I'm just gonna be making sure I've got all of the rims the central section. So we're jumping to the actual white white, which is white scar again, or GW in this tutorial. Take a little bit of this and work it in. Now it can be a good idea with whites uh, if you're looking for that kind of that properly punchy uh, last highlight to jump to a new brush and we may indeed do that. We'll have to see how much of our previous stages is evident here. We're not doing nearly as much stippling now. We're kind of concentrating on letting the texture of the model dictate where our steps go. And I am indeed going to jump to a final uh, brush that hasn't been used on any of, the, any of the darker colors. I'm using an extra large here, which may seem a little bit weird for the last step of a paint job, but I just want to catch the very, very edges. And surprisingly, as long as, as long as the overspill isn't an issue, that is a lumpy paint, as long as the overspill isn't an issue for you, using a bigger brush can actually be a really good idea. I work it all around my bristles. Test it somewhere I can really see what's going on. And hit it with a super, super gentle final stage. Now this should catch all of the edges. Um, we'll concentrate from the, from the middle. That's where we'll start our stroke. I've got the most paint on the brush. Uh, this softness and the fact that it's not got any other paint on it is gonna allow us to also stipple there without being too worried about what happens. But we wanna catch every single edge on here with just a little of this. So coming from all directions, maybe it'll take a couple of stages. That's all right, we're in no rush here. And this shows just how much of an effect your previous color can have on your brush. And that's something that can work with you or against you, depending on, you just gotta be aware of it, know that it's there. So in this situation, we're allowed it to work with us because it maintained coherency, even going through to a very bright white highlight. Whereas for this step, we don't want it. So we swapped brushes. Of course, you could wash this uh, or uh, glaze it or give it a specific edge highlight with a brush or whatever. If you were giving it a specific edge highlight, maybe you'd want to lay off this stage and save that for the brush. We're going for a super fast dry brush job though, but that doesn't mean that it can't look effective and solid. So I'm just gonna use the damping pad here a little bit, kind of ease how the paint exits the brush and get it with a dabby final stage. There we go. Okay, so for our next base, we are gonna be using Scrag Brown, Scrag Brown, moving through to Morgast Bone, Screaming Skull, and then White Scar again. That's our kind of universal last stage. This is gonna be a far warmer one. I've got the colors laid out on the palette, so let's go. Now, obviously this is a far different color from this. We may want a, uh, a kind of base coat that's evident in what we're doing, but Rather than starting off with a pure paint, I'm actually gonna mix the two together. So I've got them both on my texture palette here. I've used my dampening pad. Uh, there we go. I'm a little bit more happy with that in comparison to the other one. And just a kind of a mix between dry brushing and stippling will get us there with a nice fast base coat. Not looking for an excess of paint in any one section and kind of a, a nice even coat. So if it takes two coats, that's fine. We'll undercoat and they'll move on. Okay, so we've got this lovely kind of like mutual, uh, just perfect, uh, perfect base coat to any type of bony color that I really like, Scrag Brown. I've got a lot of love for it. I like it as a wash too. Um, we're taking our bone, which is more gas bone. We've worked quite a lot of the Scrag and more gas bone stage off our brush. And as a result, this should be quite a kind of a, a, a jump up in terms of 
the colour. I've stippled it down the middle to begin with and then the rest will be caught with fairly gentle dry brushing. Going in whichever direction makes sense from the sides here. You get a pointing implement. From the sides here I want to be able to catch sections like this so I'm coming from the side. On the scales I want to get them more on the edges so I'm going from the top uh, and on this side I'll be going inwards as well so it's whichever one makes the most sense. Um, with dry brushing you want to be going against your details not with your details. That's one of the ways to avoid streaking along with uh, avoiding over saturation of the brush and stuff like that. So that's perfect. Next stage is to move through to our next colour. So Screaming Skull next. Again, we've worked off a fair bit of our previous stage. Work it off from every direction. And here we go. Now this is quite a lot brighter than anything we've done so far. Make sure it's worked into the brush from all directions. Obviously our brush is around, but if it had sides, you want to get it from every single side. So the majority of this is going to be dry brushing. This should be quite a step up in colour. And generally speaking, I'm getting it from all angles. Basically getting all the bits that wouldn't be picked out by a wash. Okay. So we're going to be jumping to a clean brush here. Well, I say clean, it's just been used for white scar on our uh, kind of neutral grey shield. Making sure we've not got any kind of a forceful amount of excess and love from that. Working it off then gently taking a little bit, working into our bristles from all angles, testing it, making sure we've not got anywhere that's going to streak, so you can see how it's catching the back of my thumb there. That's about perfect. And then we're going to gently build up, <laughs> gently build up our highlights with this. Don't be afraid to take your time at this stage. It's a type of stage where you really will reap the benefits if you're willing to spend a fair bit of time going over it bit by bit. Yeah, picking up the edges of the symbol there. Take a little bit more. any sections you particularly want to hit, once you've worked off the excess on your brush you can get in there with a bit of a stipple. There we go, bone white. So our final uh, white is going to be a pale blue cool white which should be my favourite. I think this, if I was going to do elves, this to me feels the most stealthy, a little bit mystical, a little bit magical and a cool as well. I don't feel elves are a warm race. So uh, Fenrisian Grey, Blue Horror, Ulthuan Grey, and then finishing with White Scar. Okay, so Fenrisian Grey first. Work that into our bristles from all angles. You know the drill by now. And stip all over. As I've said in all the previous ones, not looking to build up any excess here, just looking to get decent coverage over the entirety of the model. You could airbrush this stage if you wanted to, absolutely. So, our next stage, just moving on to Blue Horror. Removed the majority of our previous colour from the brush, but obviously there's going to be a little remaining there.
It's very easy to feel like you need to rush with these techniques, but um, you're going faster than you would do if you were doing pretty much any other technique, um, apart from maybe airbrushing. So don't, don't feel that there's a need to be hasty with this stuff, particularly when a tiny bit more time, like 20% more time can really help you reap the benefits of using certain techniques. So I'll work this in a little bit more and then move on to the Ulthuan Grey. So it's not looking as blue as I was hoping for, so I'm actually gonna to jump to the clean brush, do a tiny bit of blue horror and then jump to the Ulthuan Grey. This could just be because I'm not holding it next to the other shields to be fair, but it's only a couple of seconds of work. I think that's made a difference. That's got a little bit more of a blue tint to it now. Not sure if that's showing up so well on camera. So the old one grey. Now this is the least blue of the three colours that we're starting with. So we may, may well see this kind of desaturate things against our will, but it had the most elfy name. If you wanted to make it a little bit more blue, you could of course wash it or something like that. And then onto our final paint, which is the white scar. Make sure not to touch any of that brown that we've got next to it on the palette. And catch it from all angles with this. I like this one. There's a tiny hint of the blue in there, perhaps. We could have uh, used some slightly more bluey colors, but I'm pleased overall with it. Okay, so we'll just finish this off with a couple more careful stages of that to hit the edges, and then we're done. Okay, so here we are together. We can really see that that central one here is uh, far more blue than we thought it was. It's just we weren't looking it next to its peers. So uh, learning points from this, I think it works better if we do the majority it with dry brushing. It helps catch those edges and kind of make them stand out a bit more. What I'm actually gonna do is come in with a smaller brush. You can use one of our mediums, and I'm gonna try and get a little bit more of the final stage of white evident on the edges, just to make things really jump out. So let's see how that goes. Okay, so we've got a smaller brush here. Check that this hasn't dried out, which it has. One drop in, work it in with your fingers. You get a lot of questions about that. This is our dampening pad. It's there to help us uh, release moisture into our brushes in a kind of reliable, control-worn, predictable fashion, which helps paint exit the brush, stops the paint from looking too dry, etc. So I'll take our white scar from the pot here just to make sure it's not been contaminated by any of that brown that is next to it on the palette. Work it in from all directions and then very carefully test it first on here, stipple it from above and then the real reason I wanted to get this is these symbols are so lovely and these scales are so lovely that I just wanted to make sure that all those details had really been hit just to get them some contrast. It's not made a huge difference and it might barely be perceptible, but overall over an army, the kind of these, this extra 10% is really what makes a difference between something that looks fantastic and something that just looks really solid. So it could literally be uh, like, I don't know, 30 seconds more a model, which adds up over a few, a few regiments, but can really be worth doing. So carefully pick these sections up here, especially towards the top portion of the shield. Get those edges from every angle. There we go with that. I'm all pleased with that. All right, three ways to paint white, all finished with white scar. Just to recap the paints again, I'll quickly go through them. He says, completely unprepared for this. So the cool one, which you can see on the right of here, goes through these sequence, Fenrisian Blue Horror, Ulthuan Grey. The warm one goes through Scrag Brown, Morgast Bone, and Screaming Skull. And the neutral kind of just gray through to white gray. White goes from Dawnstone to Grey Seer to Corax White. All of them finish with white scar. You can swap out any of these paints for non-GW ones. You could use whichever ones you like. 
I've just used them to kind of demonstrate it. But this is a quick, easy and effective way to kind of get your white done without being intimidated by the idea of it. If you want any of these more white, then, I mean, it, it sounds fairly obvious, but for the first step, just mixed, mix your next step in with it more heavily. So in the case of this one, you could be using a touch of the Fenrisian Grey with the majority of the Blue Horror, say three parts of this to one part of that, and then you just proceed as normal, but you can mix in more of your next stage with your uh, current stage, and that'll just kind of up the ante. Uh, the other way is to put this down as a base coat and then just cover the vast majority of it up, only leaving it in the recesses. Uh, you can also go back in with this as a wash later if that goes too far. But regardless, this is a super effective way to kind of get this type of stuff on the table, so I hope you find it useful. Thank you very much for watching. So once again, here's our whites. I've covered the different things you can do with them in the video, but um, feel free to adapt them, like weather them, chip them, streak them, cover them in washes. Uh, you can use a similar technique to get towards non-metallic metal. Uh, you can follow that as our quick NMM silver tutorial. Um, that's it basically. We hope you've liked it. If you have, let us know. Give it a like, give us a subscribe. If you haven't, also let us know. Comment below. Like, we would love to know why you didn't like it and we would love to know any future suggestions you have for videos. If you'd like to see more rough and ready get on the table ones, what colours you'd like to see. If you want to see a super in-depth one that takes ages, uh, let us know. We are happy to do whatever it is that the viewers want to see the most. Thank you very much for tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.